Well, here we are. We are live, and uh, it's good to see you, everybody. I'm Nate Eaton. It's funny because we have done so many of these on Thursday mornings for the past, I don't know, year or so, where there's a fallow daybell hearing. Normally, they hold them on Thursday mornings, but today it's Wednesday, so I'm a little off, and uh, this could be the very last hearing for Lori Fallow Daybell in Fremont County. This may be the last time she steps into the Fremont County Courthouse that we actually see her like out in outside um, because in there's a court order for her next week to be transferred to Ada County where the trial will be held. So they're going to move her by March 25th. They're not releasing specific details due to security issues, but um, they're going to move her within the next week or so by next Saturday, and then she will stay in Ada County uh, during the duration of the trial, which begins April 3rd, and based on the sentence, if she's obviously found not guilty, she'll be free to go. If she's found guilty, she'll either face life in prison or the death penalty uh, based on the jury's you know verdict, and she won't be brought back to free the Fremont County Courthouse. So it's, it's kind of a, I don't want to say end of an era. Sorry, the sun is uh, all over the place, but it's, it'll be interesting. So what exactly is happening this morning? Well, there's a few motions that are kind of still outstanding. And we're, uh, Judge Boyce may rule on those. He's got to rule on them fairly quick because the trial begins here in just a few weeks. One of the motions is taking death penalty off the table. I believe that still needs to be ruled on, so we can expect to hear from that. Another motion that's out there is the defense, Lori's defense attorneys believe that some of the evidence filed by the prosecution should not be able to be admitted uh, due to the deadline issue. Apparently the prosecution filed it. Woo, that sun is bright. Apparently the prosecution filed it on the, um, the judge said everything had to be filed by a certain date, by a certain date. The prosecution filed it on that date. So we'll see if the judge allows that evidence to be admitted and uh, what exactly he, he he decides. So those should be the main issues. They'll probably, the judge will likely talk about some, you know, trial procedures, jury questionnaires, things like that. Uh, Chad Daybell will not be in the courtroom this morning, but I'm told John Pryor will be Chad's attorney. And so he'll be there to just, he won't have anything to say. He won't speak or, or you know, raise objection. He'll just be there as a, as a, an observer because the trials of course have been severed. We still don't know a new trial date for Chad. That should be set probably in the next few weeks to a month. Uh, John Pryor has asked that it be next spring, a year from now. It's likely that it could be later this year, though, maybe in the fall uh, before the holidays and uh, Chad could have his trial. Someone asked, could, can Chad observe Lori's trial? Can he, uh, you know, watch and, and see the evidence and all the witnesses? <clears throat> if it was being televised or live streamed, he could. He, he could just tune in like you or I. Uh, but because it's not being live streamed, they're not going to release him from the Fremont County Jail to go over to Boise to watch the trial. That's not possible. But he is able to read the updates about it. He's able to, you know, read reports. And his attorney, John Pryor, can uh, can go and um, be at the trial every day if he wants, or send someone on his staff. By the way, if the shot is jumpy, we have horrible potholes uh, all over eastern Idaho. The weather's starting to warm up. And so there's just massive holes in all of our roads. So we're, we're trying to dodge them. Jordan's here. Jordan, you want to say hi? Yeah, so Jordan will be outside the courtroom door today uh, catching Lori as she leaves. She will be there. An order to transport was filed, so she'll be brought over to the courthouse. She's, she's probably already there. This hearing, I believe, starts at 930. Sometimes they do uh, uh, some court business before the hearing actually starts. Uh, again, we're not allowed to live stream it. We're not allowed to um, do anything uh, uh, as far as live broadcasting or audio, but we can do um, live updates on Twitter, which I'll be doing as long as the internet is stable and, and the power selection is there. <coughs> Excuse me. When did they separate the trials? The judge, uh, within the past month or so, severed the trial. And the whole issue with, with that is that 
John Pryor, Chad's attorney, argued that um, that some evidence, DNA evidence, crucial DNA evidence, uh, in his opinion, crucial DNA evidence needs time to be tested. That after it's tested, his experts should have the right to evaluate it on their own terms, which is a legal right. The defense can go through all of the evidence. And he said that that evidence will not be back by his expert and tested in time for this trial to start on April 3rd. And because Chad Daybell has waived his right to a speedy trial, uh, the judge said, okay, you can, we'll sever it. Lori Vallow has not waived her right to a speedy trial. She wants this trial to happen. She's ready to go forward and, uh, you know, share her version of events or have the, her defense, you know, d defend her. And so the, the, the trial has to happen. She has been in jail for three years, over three years now, if you can believe it. Uh, someone asked, are Larry and Kay here? They're not here. They are gearing up to come to uh, Boise here in a few weeks. They plan to be at the trial every day as long as, you know, they can. Um, there, there are some uh, stipulations as far as you have to go on and reserve a seat. You can be in the main courtroom or an overflow room. That does not apply to the victims, by the way. Lori and Kay will have a reserve, a reserve seat. But, um, you know, that can be, those can be long days of sitting in a courtroom for every day for six to eight hours, for six to eight weeks, six to ten weeks. And uh, they were, they were, ve they are very disappointed. I can tell you, they're very disappointed that the judge is not allowing live streaming of the hearing of the trial, not allowing audio streaming of the trial, no cameras in the courtroom. Uh, we are able to get the audio at the end of the day. So, so many of you have written me in the past few weeks, week or so, saying, "How will we be able to hear the trial?" Well, at the end of every day, we're going to get the audio. We're going to upload it and you can go on and listen to it on East Idaho News. There is a fee that we're, we'll cover. Um, I believe it's, originally they said it was $5 for the first 20 minutes, I think, and then a quarter for every minute thereafter. So it would have been a little pricey, but now it's $60 a day, they're saying. So please don't send money. As many of you have asked if you can send money, I really appreciate the offer, but, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover the cost so that you can listen to the hearing every day. And we're currently exploring a sketch artist um, to come into the trial every day and do sketches. And we will, uh, we're working with a media pool on that. So uh, that's what's happening. Um, I see a couple of questions. It's the 11th hour. What are her lawyers coming up with now? Well, her lawyers, their job is to defend her. And so they will, um, they're, they're going to defend her and they're going to, you know, make of what they feel is right and just and obviously the prosecution will oppose that so so we'll see exactly what does happen today uh, is it the same judge yes it will be the same judge just judge, judge Boyce has been on this case the district judge has been on this case pretty much since well once it was bound over to district court it starts in the lower court here in Idaho in the magistrate court and then it goes to the higher court which is what it's in now uh, so Boyce will be the same judge for Lori 